This video is sponsored by Pulsar Modular. This will be the second part to a video I made about wave shapers, distortion and saturation. You can find that video in the description. If the past video explained how the sound is processed by a wave shaper and how you can create your own types of distortion, I want this new part to show different ways you can actually use them. I want to give you a list of things you can try when tinkering with your sound. So, one of the things distortion do is adding harmonics to a sound, which will make it thicker, denser, and also make it sound crispier in tone, because it will add higher frequencies to it. This is used a lot, for example, to make sub basses translate well on smaller speakers. Sub basses being often a single or a few low frequencies, you wouldn't hear them if you listen to them on a phone, for example. By adding a distortion to a sub, you would add the upper frequencies needed to play them on such small speakers. And then it is often a good idea to put a filter after the distortion to remove the excess of frequencies you don't need. Now, to control better the tone of your sub, you can use the distortion as a parallel effect. That means the original sound of the sub will stay as is on a track, and the distorted sub would be on a separate track, so you can blend the two to get the balance you need. To make your life easier down the road, I'd recommend saving a custom effect track to do all your parallel processing. It's a very simple one. You create an effect track, and then you create two chains, the first one would be for the dry signal, without any effect, and the other one would be for the wet signal, with all the effects you want. Then you need two macro knobs. Link the volume of both chains to the first one, and link the chain selector here to the second one. Now in the chain selector, expand both blue zones all the way, pull the white bar above each one to the left for the first chain, and to the right for the second chain. This will essentially make the second macro knob act like a dry wet knob. You can now save this effect track, and we'll use it a lot today. So, with this, if we put a distortion in it, the drive of the distortion will set how many harmonics will be added, the dry weight will set the level of those harmonics, and the volume knob will set the overall volume of the track. And now, you may be asking yourself, why do all that when some distortion effects already have a dry weight knob? Well, first, because not all of them have one, but also because that allows you to add all the effects you need on the wet channel, like filters, which is my next point. Keep in mind that the harmonics added to the sound depends on the frequencies previously in your sound. Each frequency originally there will add its own set of harmonics, and each one can sound differently. So you can choose to distort only a band of frequency and get different tones out of it. Let's put the rack from earlier and add a saturator in the wet channel. But this time I'll put the filter right before it. So the saturator will distort only the lows, only the highs, or only a band of frequency in the middle. Hear the difference it makes. So, adding distortion to certain parts of your sound can really alter the timbre in different ways, and you should keep that in mind when you are designing your sound. Filters are best friends with distortions. Though in this setup, the band of frequency that is distorted is duplicated, as it is present in the dry channel and in the wet channel. So, you would get a boost in that range of frequencies. You may want it sometimes, and sometimes you may not, so I'll show you how to get rid of that. To avoid boosting a range of frequencies unwantedly, you need to subtract it from the original sound before adding parallel effects to it. And there's a way to do that perfectly and dynamically, and we'll create an effect track for that. By the way, you can download all the racks I will make today for free with the link in the description. So let's create an effect track. Make two channels, one for the dry signal and one for the wet signal, and say we want to add effects only to this band of frequencies. Now, this band of frequencies exists in the wet channel, and it also exists in the dry channel. So, to remove it from the dry channel, we need to duplicate the channel with the bandpass filter, and invert its phase with the utility effect. 
Now that the phase in this band is inverted, when we mix it with the dry signal, the frequencies in that band will be subtracted from it. So let's put both these chains in another effect track so we can apply effects to the results of that operation. So in the end we have an effect track in which is a channel with a bandpass filter, this is the wet channel, and the dry channel which is another effect track with the raw signal and the phase inverted version of the bandpass filter track. To make it easy to use, I will link the cutoff point of both filters to a macro knob and the resonance of both filters to a second macro knob. So now you can add distortion to the wet channel and play with the macros to see how it affects the sound without having much variations in the overall volume. The beauty of it is that you can swap filters for low pass filters for example to split your signal between the highs and the lows or you could swap them for other kinds of EQs or filters like a comp filter for example to try more experimental things. This should give you a lot of freedom to experiment with your distortions. Ok so the three first tips were like fleshed out versions of basic ways to use distortion. Use parallel distortion, use filters with distortion and how to achieve a better balance in your sound. These are the bread and butter of distortion. You can use them on any sound, basses, leads, drums, and with any type of distortion, like overdrive, fuzz, wave folding, or even beat crushers. So that's already a lot of combinations to try, but if you want to get deeper in sound design, the real thing begins when you start combining them and repeating them. And that will be true for most of the next tips as well. Combine them and then rinse and repeat. Say we start with this sound from before. You can add another distortion after this one. To do that, I will use the effect track for the parallel effects, which have its own EQ before it to select which part I want to distort. Rinse and repeat. Instead of the parallel effect rack, you can use the clean split band rack. And like that, step by step, you can sculpt your sound. It's like an exploration, for which every step gives you the opportunity to control the direction you want to take. Repeating the same process again and again can be very powerful, as much as it can be overlooked. So try to keep that in mind. And if you want to have two distortions in parallel, nothing prevents you to nest a parallel effect track in the dry channel of another. And also, don't hesitate to use several different distortions, as each one will affect the sound differently. Ok, so, up until now we've seen a lot of ways to play with parallel distortions, by mixing a distorted signal with its clean counterpart. Now, we are about to enter the domain that I find the most fun, which is sending two signals together into the same distortion. See, when you mix two things to send them in a heavy distortion, they will be crushed and mashed together, and depending on what you send in, weird things can happen. Like, the most common is to mix a sub-bass with a white noise, to design basses for drum and bass for example. Here is the sub and white noise without distortion. You probably won't hear the sub if you are on your phone speaker or earbuds. And now, hear how crunchy it gets when you put some distortion on it. So 
See what I mean? Like they get crushed one against the other. The distortion needs to be heavy. So you can use this technique as is to create sound and make instruments from it, like we did in the video on how to make dubstep sounds. Or you can utilize it to modify sounds you already have. Like you can add noise to a sound and distort it heavily to make it crunchier, or add a low tone to it and distort it to make it rumble. Let's see how it sounds. Here's a sound we already have. Let's add noise to it, which could be done to fill the spectrum of frequency and make it sound fuller already. And then see how it sounds with the distortion. Of course, different distortions get different results. Now, my favorite. Let's add a sub to it and distort that. I really like how this sounds. And you can try it with a sub even lower. And to make it cleaner, I'd recommend putting a high pass filter afterwards to remove the sub tone. If you want to have a sub with your bass, it's recommended to add it separately anyways to make it cleaner. This one would be only to make the distortion react. If you want to experiment with that, I've also made an instrument track for it to make it easier. That's the sub noise crusher. When you load it, you click on go here and it will lead you to the place where you can put your instrument. From there, you can add a sub, add noise, add distortion, change the type of distortion, then clean the sound with a filter, and boost the efficacy of the filter with a slope knob. And finally, change the pitch of the sub to see different tones you can get. With it, don't hesitate to change the distortion or the waveform of the sub. This is a free template for you to experiment with. So a low tone can be crushed with noise to get something crunchy, but we can replace the white noise with a cleaner higher tone to get a more defined sound. This is how the screeches type sounds are made for dubstep for example. We can try that with two sine waves, which is like the cleanest version of it we can get. So here are two sine waves, two octaves apart, and I will add the distortion progressively. With this, the volume of each tone will have a huge impact on the final result. So with this, you have a lot of things to try out. This can work with any sound, like any synth or any sample. For example, that is what I did to create the heavy leads in my psychedelic breakfast sound. I started with this sample of me hitting a cup. I looped a tiny part of it to make a bass sound. Then I duplicated the sampler and detuned the copies uh, two, three or four octaves up and modulated their volume to make the wobbles. And finally, I sent all that to a heavy distortion. I'll activate and deactivate the pitched up copies so you can hear the difference it makes. If 
you want to experiment with that, I've also made an instrument track for it. In this one, you will need to put your instrument twice, one in each chain. Then, you can change the pitch difference between the two chains, the amount of drive, make one chain louder than the other, and adjust the overall volume. Again, don't hesitate to try it with different instruments and different distortions. You will get a different result every time. Next is an advice that I could put in each and every video I make, which is try and add some movement in your sound. In each tip we viewed so far, you can try changing the drive of the distortion over time, change the cutoff of the filters, or the volume of each channel, for example. You can modulate all those parameters with automations, envelopes, LFOs, or velocity to make slow evolving or fast rhythmic movements. There's a lot you can do, so if you want to get some ideas, I will put a link in the description to a video I made about how to add movement to your sounds using Ableton Live modulation tools. But to train new things here and build upon what we've seen so far, you can, for example, take the previous technique with a low and a high tone being distorted together and write two melodies for it, one for the bass and one a few octaves higher. So the interval between two notes will not always be the same, which can create a different effect every time the two notes will go together in the distortion. You can also modulate the volume of the higher pitch channel to either make its tone evolve slowly or to make rhythmic wobbles, for example. And to expand on other tips we've seen, you can modulate the level of a parallel chain, for example, which can be done with an auto pan effect, or automate the drive of the distortion, for instance. So we can distort two sounds together, and if they are enough far apart, crazy things can happen. Well, you can kind of do that with only one sound. The idea would be to extract two bands of frequencies and then distort them together. The only thing we kind of need is to start with a sound that is very rich in harmonics for it to work properly. One way to do that is to use two band filters in parallel. So I'll add the parallel effect track and put a band filters on each chain. Each chain will then isolate a specific band. We can then put distortion after this track to distort the two bands together. And to go even further, we can put all this setup in the wet channel of another parallel effect track. So we can have a dry wet knob for that effect. Of course, I've already prepared an effect track for this, so you can test it more easily. With this, you have the frequency and resonance of both filters, a balance knob to make one filter louder than the other, a drive knob for the saturation, then a dry wet and a general volume. One of distortion's best friend is filtering, and with all the filters we've seen in the previous techniques, it would be very cool if those filters could follow the notes we play. This way, the frequency of the cutoff points of those filters would always be tuned to the frequency of the notes being played. This is called key tracking, and there's actually a way to set that up in Ableton Live. For it, you need the MIDI effect called expression control. This allows you to link any MIDI information, like the velocity or key track, to any parameter. When you link the key track to a cutoff filter, I've noticed it seemed better tuned if you set the range to 50%. Thing is, with this setup, the frequency of the cutoff point is locked, and you can't really move it somewhere else on the spectrum. I explained a workaround for that in the video I linked in the description about Ableton's modulators, but long story short, I've made an effect track to make it easier for you. First, you need to map the parameter you want to control with the key tracking here on the first line. Then you have the range knob that you can use to tune the frequency to the note you want. Then you can use the octave knob to transpose that note above or below. This key tracking can be very useful to have, and it will also be handy with the next tip. The principle of distortions, and saturation in particular, is to push the gain of a signal until the waveform starts clipping. And the way the waveform clips determines the type of distortion. And this will have two effects in addition to adding harmonics to the sound. First, you can make a sound as loud as you want. Saturation will limit the maximum level of the signal. It will clip, it will get distorted, but it won't get louder than the clipping level. And second, also like a limiter, saturation will reduce the dynamic of a sound. 
it will reduce the difference in volume between the quieter parts of the sound and the louder parts. One way to utilize that is to overboost one band of frequency before sending it to a heavy distortion, which will flatten it out. This kind of thing goes very well with key tracking. Another way to use the dynamic side of a distortion is to use it on a group, like a glue compressor, but that gets the sound richer, fuller. That can sometimes help in a mix by flattening the whole group. For example, here this song I'm working on with a friend. We had a hard time mixing the drums with the bass until we distorted them together quite heavily. Here the difference it makes. The last technique I want to show you will allow you to isolate the frequencies that are added by the distortion, at least partially. When you add distortion to a sound, you will add harmonics, right? But the frequencies from the original sound will remain, so you can mix that with the clean original sound, but of which you switch the phase, so any frequency that is common between before and after the distortion should disappear. That can allow you to have a cleaner sound, and can leave a little more room to layer it with other sounds. You could add a sub, for example, which would be a bit cleaner in this way. Though this cleaning may not be perfect. See, for example, you have these two chains with exactly the same thing going in each of them. If you invert the phase of one chain, you'd get absolute silence. But as soon as you add a saturation in one chain, even with the drive at zero, some sound will start to bleed out. So, not perfect, and that will depend on the effects you use, but remember that you can use phase inversion to isolate the frequencies added by a distortion. And I've added a knob to the parallel effect track named Wet Isolator. With it, you can isolate the frequencies unique to the wet signal and that works best when the dry wet is at 50%. In fact, you can even use this technique to isolate the frequencies processed by any effect, like a filter for example. So, these are the 12 tips and techniques I wanted to share with you to make the most out of your distortions. I hope you'll have a good time experimenting with them. If you want to know everything about distortions and how to design your own, you should check my old video about wave shapers. And don't hesitate to check the other videos I've linked in the description as well. You can download all the Ableton racks I've used today with the link I've put in the description as well. It's all free, so there is no reason not to get them. Though, if you want to support the channel and have the possibility to do so, you can join my Patreon. From $1 per month, this will give you access to more downloadable content, like Ableton Projects files, sample packs, and other PDFs. Big thanks to everyone who already support the channel there. I know some of you have been there for a long time, and you all give sense to the tutorials I've put out there. So, thanks a lot. I also want to thank Pulsar Modular for sponsoring this video. They make high-quality plugins and VSTs to use with any DAW. I have reviewed already their filter set that is called P565 Siren, and that is actually this plugin that have inspired some of the tips you have seen in this video. Most of these plugins are emulations of analog machines that have amazing sounds with the advantage that they can be updated. These plugins are of high quality, they are made by good people, it's Pulsar Modular, you should check it out. In the meantime, take care of yourself, take care of others, and I'll see you next time.